Space Camp is a camp where you train as astronauts train, where you learn space history, you learn about NASA and the International Space Community's future missions, and you get to take part in missions in a simulated space environment. It is the closest you can get to outer space without leaving the planet. Space Camp is an immersive experience. It's a way to really get in here, to put away the outside world, and act like you are part of NASA. That moment when I realized that, yeah, I think I really do want to go to space, was on day one, probably 30 minutes in, when we were talking to Dr. Don Thomas, who's been to space, and his experience. In the orbiter, this is where I get super excited. There's only four positions, so we're not going to fight over this. We have the commander. They will actually um, be in charge of the crew, but they will actually be landing the orbiter, okay? It's not just some like cool little screen that lands. No, you actually land it. The Alpha mission was a two-hour training that we do later in the day. And you'll be in spacesuits. Wow. Okay. That's All right. like a prep to what we're actually going to do. This is your training. I was an EVA specialist, which was an extravehicular activity specialist, which means when the astronaut goes out of their module or their pod in open space. Go back the other way. We were replacing antennas and doing some maintenance on one of the big satellites. <laughs> my arms aren't long enough. <laughs> oh my. Got it. They put me on a, a pulley system that made me feel like it was zero gravity, and I had to make my way kind of across the mission area to grab the antenna and to give it to my partner for the satellite. We're gonna re-enter standby. Capcom Enterprise, come in. Okay, I need you to locate panel L1. Ooh. Whoa, what are you doing? Stop it, stop it, stop it. To the right. Calm, calm, to the right. To the right, to the right. Okay. Hard, hard right turn. Hard right. Okay, so we, we're going off the runway because of how fast we were, but... <laughs> Somehow, magically, we landed in the center of the runway, but we just went off of it because of how fast we were coming in. It's at that moment that I realized it's not just about the astronaut, it's not just about the human that's being sent into space. There's this huge, huge support team behind that individual that makes everything come together. Right after lunch, we did the multi-access trainer. It was built in the 60s to basically train astronauts to help correct a spin. So as they're re-entering the atmosphere, if their module gets into a spin. Okay, head back, eyes open. To help them orient themselves and understand the feeling of that spin and do things to correct that. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you. 
I noticed you've already pointed out in your book at the date that is on your little book. It is June 19th, 2044. This is a futuristic mission. We are going to Mars. Space is open to everyone. Granted, we may not all leave the planet and go to Mars, but we can all take part in that journey. It is our human destiny to explore and that knows no bounds of age or nation or gender. It's open to all. So what y'all are going to be doing, you are in control of sending the first crew to Mars. You are sending your Orion capsule. They will be setting up the Mars Elysium base that we have already sent. So in here, you are in control of everyone else, just like in the other mission control. FAO, your job is you are going to be dealing with a lot of the press, a lot of the numbers. So you're going to be like Fido, and you're also going to be dealing with the press releases. This mission is a little bit different. We have the same kind of scripts, about the same thing. However, we're gonna have capsule anomalies, just like you had in your shuttle, but we also throw two more. We have a thinking anomaly, and we have things called medical anomalies. If we do this the right way, and we all are work together, it should be constructive chaos. So in our training, we trained um, for all of, of the things that were in the textbooks and in our manuals. And we knew what we were going to do and we knew which time we had to do it. And we left the training feeling pretty confident that we could do this. What we didn't know is that they were going to throw these anomalies. Or on a few copy. There All right, can you, is there a, an extension? Uh, carefully and I'll monitor your condition to be back. Okay. <laughs> 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 Ten being bad, one being very good. What do you feel right now? I think I have to go down there. Four. four. All right, so you feel a little better. Oh, I'm having a heart attack. Start coughing. So much blood. Locating an AED. He's coughing on blood. It probably has to be with them. What is your additional alert? Why the alarm's going off. Uh, one moment, we're going to go and check the uh, biology center to see if there's something going on in there. One moment, here, you see if you can address the, address the among us. The reason astronauts train for years and years and years before going on, you know, a mission, it could be they train for four years before going on a 15-day mission, is because they train for all of the things that could go wrong. He's still breathing, he's just out cold, he slipped on some water. Okay, I'm going to be really careful Oh, no, 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 do your, because I just did the same thing. You're going to break okay. a leg, too. Is this I've got can him. You, can you he's, feel him? Is he breathing? He's stable. I'm going to wait uh, assistance from CMO. Not every mission goes off exactly how it's supposed to, and so these astronauts are problem solvers. He's breathing, but he's out cold. So we've cleaned up the water that he slipped on. We're just waiting advice on uh, how to remedy. I'm thinking of if they could enter the moon. Or no, that's, that's what I see. Next task is to prepare for splashdown. Oh, dang. That's funny. <laughs> there. This has been eye-opening, you know? I, I think that when you go into space camp, you think, oh, I'm going to learn so much, I'm going to do so much, I'm going to have all these experiences, I'm going to meet all of these new people. And I did all of those things, but there were so many things that I learned and I experienced that were just beyond my imagination. We did one two-hour mission and one three-hour mission. And we did trainings for them, and you know, they were missions, we had fun with them. We took it seriously, but we knew that it, you know, it was not life or death. But there's still this incredible camaraderie and trust that's built into that with these five hours of missions. Space camp is a lot of fun, a lot of wonder, but it starts with intellectual curiosity and stimulating that curiosity of what comes next, what comes next.
Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.